At least 50 people are dead and more than 200 are injured on the Las Vegas, Las Vegas Strip in what's now being described as the deadliest mass shooting in recent U.S. history. Police have shot and killed the shooter. It happened during the Route 91 Harvest Country Music Festival at the Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino, which, which had 30,000 people in attendance. Witnesses say country singer Jason Aldean was playing near the end of the concert when they heard what sounded like rapid machine gunfire. This morning, President Donald Trump tweeted, quote, my warmest condolences and sympathies to the victims and families of the terrible Las Vegas shooting. God bless you. Police have not speculated a motive for the shooting, but they do know the shots came from a window on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay. Now, if we can pull it up, here's a look at the suspect. He has been identified as 64-year-old Stephen Paddock of the Las Vegas area, who again was shot and killed by police. Right now, the Las Vegas police are questioning this woman, 62-year-old Mira Lou Danley. Authorities are calling her Paddock's companion, and they believe she was his roommate. At this point, they're trying to figure out what she might have known before the shooting occurred and what led Paddock to carry out the mass shooting. In other news this morning, President Donald Trump describes Puerto Rico's hurricane recovery as being under really great control. The president made the comment as he was dedicating the President's Cup golf trophy to the people of Puerto Rico, Texas, and Florida, all still recovering from devastating hurricanes. President Trump also called some of those who questioned his administration's commitment to Puerto Rico, quote, politically motivated ingrates. And O.J. Simpson was set free from a Nevada prison Sunday after serving nine years for armed robbery. The 70-year-old Simpson, who had said during his parole hearing he'd like to move back to Florida, where he had lived for about a decade, will instead, according to a parole official, remain in Las Vegas for now. On to Crime Watch. Billings police are looking for the suspect who robbed a gas station at gunpoint early this morning. The robbery happened shortly after 2 a.m. at the Holiday Store at 105 Broadwater Avenue. An employee and a patron say the male suspect displayed a handgun and demanded money. The suspect took off on foot with an undisclosed amount of cash. He's described as a white male standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing 160 pounds, and wearing white latex gloves. The employee and patron were unharmed. Elsewhere, a Billings man involved in a motorcycle crash has died. The, the crash happened Sunday night on Alkali Creek Road. Witnesses told police the motorcyclist was traveling east when he laid the bike down. The 67-year-old man was transported to the hospital where he later died. The cause of the crash is under investigation and the man's name has not been released. And another fatal crash to report this morning, a 37-year-old circle man died after he crashed his pickup Sunday morning north of Glendive. The Montana Highway Patrol says the man was driving south on Secondary Highway 254. The pickup veered off the road several times before it rolled. We're told the driver was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigating troopers believe alcohol, drugs, and speed were factors in the crash. The man's death marks the 148th of the year on Montana's roadways, and his name as well has not been released. Meanwhile, an investigation is underway after a man allegedly exposed himself to a child at the Billings Heights Walmart. Police said a white male of unknown age exposed himself to a child around 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon. At last word, there is no suspect. Police did not receive a strong description of the suspect, and security footage did not provide enough information for a detailed description. Social media posts indicate the incident occurred in a toy aisle and the victim was a young girl. Walmart management declined to comment on the situation. Switching gears, we go to Laurel, where the first season for a locally produced sitcom set in a small Montana town is nearly complete. Loco takes place in the fictitious town of Lowell, Montana. Much of the show has been shot at the Caboose Saloon and Casino in Laurel. The last shoot is next week, and the show will take a look at veterans and PTSD. This particular episode is what we call our uh, tribute to veterans episode, and we would like to do that one day a year as a cast and crew and as a company as a whole. We want to do one thing. We leave our politics at the door, but we want to do one good thing for the community, and the veteran issue is one thing that usually most people won't argue on. Uh, we all can agree, whether no matter our differences are, that that's an issue that we want to see taken care of. The crew will start shooting early next Sunday morning. The plan is to have the first season of 10 episodes finished before present, presenting it to companies to show on their web platforms.
In other news, the walk to end Alzheimer's at Zoo Montana drew in 1,000 people who hope to help and raise awareness about the disease. According to the Alzheimer's Association, 20,000 people in Montana live with Alzheimer's or related dementia. The walk raises money to care for patients and families, research and public policy efforts. At this time, there is no cure. The walk means a lot of patients and families who care for them. This disease takes so much from families, emotionally, spiritually, financially, every aspect it takes. But there are some pretty powerful things we realize that this gives back. And the most significant is the opportunity to get to know and become close to and connected with the unfortunately growing family of people that are affected by this disease. Sunday's walk in Billings raised more than $111,000. These seven walks in Montana raised $350,000. Well, before we check up on the forecast, we're following up on a story MTN brought you in August. Fashion designer Belinda Bullshoe showcased her line of dresses at the Oxford Fashion Show in Paris on Thursday. She was the first ever Native American designer to open a show at Fashion Week in New York. Bullshoe says the show went well and that she felt accomplished after seeing her dream come true in the City of Lights. She added she felt proud representing the Blackfeet tribe and believes anyone can accomplish their dreams with the right work ethic.